Hi, my name is Lina from Lina's Healing Haven and today um, I'm going to channel a teaching about the role of emotions. So um, this is actually a topic that I often discuss in my workshops and um, today the guides are going to offer a little bit something different. So if you've attended my workshops before, know that it won't be the same thing. So first of all, um, uh, we want to know why do we even have emotions in the first place? So basically, when we were in the form of souls, when we were souls in the divine realm, there are no emotions at all. It doesn't mean that um, the souls in the divine realm are like floating around in a zombified state where they don't feel anything at all. But more like, because everything is so... Um, the energy up the energy up there is so pure and so laser sharp in a way that reveals the true essence of the soul which is actually light pure light so it's the same it's the same as um it's the, it's the same feeling as when you are lying on the beach feeling the sun on your skin it's indescribable some may describe it as peace or bliss, or relaxation, or enjoyment. Well, it's all of that and more. And that's the default state of all the souls in the divine realm. So why is it that humans have such a wide range of emotions from being, depress uh, being depressed to the um, extent of being suicidal to um, complete, indescribable, um, utter bliss and joy? Well, it's because when God decided that he wants to expand his awareness of himself by creating souls that would take a rebirth as humans in the human realm, um, God wanted to experience duality. <clears throat> because in the divine realm, where God resides, is only love, only light. But just like a fish that doesn't know what water is because it's always being surrounded by water, God cannot fully appreciate what is love and light unless he's able to experience what is not love and light. Hence, humans uh, are reborn with a protective divine veil that basically shields them and uh, divides them away from the divinity and allow them to have ego and pride and a sense of separateness from their fellow human beings. And this creates a lot of drama and tension in our life that then creates um, different kinds of emotions such as grief or disappointment or anger. And even though it's not pleasant to experience such emotions, but it's exactly what God wants because having anger then allow you to appreciate forgiveness. Having sadness then allow you to appreciate happiness. Having loneliness allows you to appreciate a sense of connection. And all of these contrasting dualistic experiences allows God to fully understand the whole experience of the universe and of life. And that allows him to develop his uh, wisdom and um, understanding of um, the different components of what makes up the entire world. So emotions are very important and emotions are not meant to be resisted or judged. They are Many times um, when certain religions, well, I was born a Buddhist, and as a Buddhist, I was uh, I encountered teachings that say that anger will burn lifetimes of karma, and so you should never get angry. And because I was a devout Buddhist, and I believed in that teaching, so whenever I get angry, I would feel awfully ashamed. And I would think, oh my gosh, how many lifetimes of good karma have I burnt with these few moments of anger? Because that's exactly what 
the books taught. That's what the teachers taught. And then and and hence, whenever I feel angry, I will feel ashamed, and I will get angry at myself. And this anger leads leads to even more shame and more anger. And then it becomes a、um, a vicious cycle where the anger keeps escalating because of this judgment I have towards the emotion of anger. And then、um, in our culture, especially you know in Singapore,、um, it's very common for Asian parents to see a crying child and tell the child, "Don't cry, don't cry. Be a good girl. Don't cry." Be a good boy. Boys are not supposed to cry. You're a brave boy. Don't cry. Of course,、uh, this is not as common in、uh, the current generation of parenting because current generation of parenting is、um, definitely one step more enlightened than the old the the older methods of parenting. But people of my generation and people who are older than me will definitely remember either having their own parents telling them that it's bad to cry. Or observing it、um, happening to their friends or whatever. Okay, so then we, we then we associate tears with something as to be shameful about, to be discouraged, and to be、um, avoided. And then when we cry, we will apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm being a <laughs> say. You know, you you apologize for your tears. You hide away when you cry. Uh, you feel embarrassed, you know, letting people see your tears. Once again, the current generation is more enlightened than the previous ones, so、uh, it is much more acceptable for people to cry in public or even on national TV right now.、Um, and people are starting to applaud、um, men for being sensitive to their feelings and for allowing tears to flow. But this wasn't always the case,、uh, and those of you in my generation and older. But know what I'm talking about. So,、um, certain emotions actually carry a lot of negative associations, a lot of baggage, and this is the reason why many people actually、um, tend to push away the emotions when it comes up, and they keep pushing it into the system, pushing it away so that they don't have to face it. And what happens is that it creates a lot of tense energy in the body that.、Um, If not looked at, you know,、um, if if it's if it, it continues to be not looked at, the tense energy would then create a lot of friction, and it would coagulate, coagulate just like milk coagulating into cream. The energy that used to be loose and fluid will start to coagulate and become very dense balls of energy that will eventually lead to. Uh, solid matter, and guess what? Will that translate to in the body? It means that you develop things like cysts, tumors, lumps, you know, stuff like that. Things which the body is not meant to have. So, okay, let's come back to the topic of what's the role of emotions. So basically, emotions are meant to be our teachers. It's our guiding post, telling us. What needs to be fixed in our lives? So that the right now the guys are going to、uh, ask me to cover five different emotions that will uh that that are teaching us what we should be looking at in our lives, what we need to what we need to address. So the first one is anger. Anger is the emotion that comes up when you perceive that things are not fair in your life. Someone. Bumps into you and doesn't say sorry, you get angry because that's not fair. Your boss gives you a scolding because you came late, and you think, "Hey, I came late because I have a valid reason," and you think that's not fair, you get angry. Things like that. So when anger comes up, there are I one of two different approaches that you want to consider taking. First of all, check if it's okay. This is a question for you to ask yourself to decide. Which of the approach you need to take? The question is, is it really unfair? Okay. So, if it's really a situation that is objectively unfair, that if if you tell this situation to ten different people, okay, and these ten people cannot be people who are forever on your side, and if all these ten people agree that it's not fair, 
then what you need to do is to fix the situation, okay? Either by challenging the other party or avoiding the other party if you feel that they are not the kind of people who would respond to being challenged. Or you could um, set up boundaries that will prevent other people from taking advantage of you, okay? That's the first approach, fixing the situation. But if you ask the question, is it really, really unfair? And you get the, and you get the answer, no. Actually, it is completely fair. You came late to the office, and the, and the boss is basically paying money to someone who's absent in the office. Is that fair to the boss? Not at all, right? So he scolded you, but it's fair. You should be punctual, and if you are not, you should try your best to mitigate the situation, to be fair to your boss. Um, if your spouse gets uh, all angry at you for not performing a task that you should be doing, is it really unfair? No. Your spouse has every right to get angry because his expectation was not met. It doesn't mean you have to meet his expectation, but it's completely fair and justifiable for your spouse to scold you. So, if it's really a situation that is not that objectively unfair, that you can find a reason for why it happened that way, that is acceptable and logical, then you should uh, re reframe your perception of the situation, and by changing the perspective, you allow the anger to simmer down, okay? So this is uh, what anger teaches us to do. To fix things that are not fair and to fix our perceptions when it's only just our perception, okay? Second emotion is sadness. Sadness is the emotion that comes up when something dear to you is not with you, okay? Be it uh, an object, a prized possession, or a loved one. Sadness is an emotion that comes up when you have not taken care of your heart enough. So when sadness comes up, and if you are not able to regain connection to whatever that is missing in your life, that leads to the sadness, then you should um, make efforts to take care of your heart by doing things that make your heart feel good. What makes your heart feel good? Certain... Uh, 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 there are uh, various options such as singing, dancing, exercising, watching comedies, uh, talking to a good friend or a loved one, and meditation. I mean, there are many other options as well, but what I've listed are the most common ones that will make a person's heart feel good. Okay? So this is how you should uh, respond to sadness. The third emotion is jealousy. Jealousy is an emotion that comes up when you perceive yourself as being inferior to another person in some way that uh, you feel shouldn't be the case. So uh, when, come, when faced with jealousy, you need to count your blessings and look at all the good qualities in your life and all the wonderful things in your life. And to understand that um, everybody has um, wonderful aspects in their life as well as the lousy aspects. And just because another person seems to have something more wonderful than what you have, it doesn't mean that there are no wonderful things in your own life as well. So all a matter of counting your blessings and learning to be grateful, okay? So to counter jealousy with gratitude and contentment. The fourth emotion is loneliness. Lo loneliness is the emotion when your heart is closed that causes you to uh, distance yourself from other people or... Uh, closing your heart as a response to 
where others distance themselves from you for one reason or another. So the um, the emotion of loneliness is a teacher telling us that we are worthy of love. And if there's no one to love you, then to love yourself. Okay? So the solutions for this are quite similar to um, what uh, the list of options that I gave for opening your heart, for taking care of your heart. So to sing, to dance, to read good books, to, um, to uh, meditate. And one additional remedy for this would be to visualize golden light shining on yourself. Okay? Because sometimes being with people can also make us feel lonely. But being with the divine never ever causes you to feel lonely. Because the divine is always so unconditionally loving and accepting and protective of you. So shining a golden light from the divine has a very very uh, powerful and effective effect uh, of allowing you to feel cared for and uh, embraced. So you can try that the next time you feel lonely. Okay. The third one, uh, the, sorry, the fifth emotion would be the emotion of resentment. So resentment comes up when resentment is, uh, a, second of, is, is a subset of anger. So the feeling of resentment uh, is uh, somewhat similar to the feeling of anger and sometimes they both come hand in hand. So resentment comes up when um, when you feel like you have been judged. In a way that you feel you don't deserve. Okay? So, the solution for that is to affirm to yourself that other people's judgment don't matter. And in any case, you cannot control how people choose to judge you, how they choose to perceive you as. And the only judgment that really, really matters is your own perception of yourself. If you judge yourself, then that's um, a different story, of course. And that's another topic of discussion altogether. Uh, you should always judge yourself kindly, okay, with love and with compassion. So if you allow your self-perception that's loving and kind to be so strong and expensive, if that it fills up your whole being, then there is no space for other people's judgments to come to affect you in any way, right? Just like a cup of water that is completely clean and the water is filled up to the brim of the cup, you can try to drop dirty water into the cup and you find that it will have almost no effect on the contents of the cup as compared to if the dirty water was dropping into a cup that's only half filled with clean water. So it's the same. When you fill yourself up with love and tenderness and kindness, okay, there's no room for people's judgments to affect you negatively. And that's the state you want to achieve. So when you have resentment, learn to affirm yourself lovingly. And that will um, allow you to grow okay, as a person. So these are the five emotions that the guys want me to touch on. Um, there are many, many other emotions um, that a human can experience. But these five are the most important because <clears throat> they teach us to love ourselves and to take care of ourselves and to um, balance our life so that we can uh, pass, we can move forward, you know, in a way that doesn't hurt others and yet still allow ourselves to shine more light in our own life and into other people's lives. So the next time you have such a negative emotion, remind yourself 
it is not the enemy. There's no need to push the emotion away or to judge yourself for having the emotion. Instead, ask yourself, what is this emotion trying to teach me? What is the emotion asking me to look at into my life and in myself? Yeah? So I'm going to end off uh, with uh, this, this video with a uh, channel sound healing that the guys asked me to do. And basically, this sound healing is going to be very powerful. Um, it is going. It has the. Uh, it has the function of um, clearing all emotions within you, all negative emotions within you, regardless of what the emotion is. Okay. So, uh, the analogy they use is that it's like a strong, powerful wind blowing the clouds away, so that the sun is visible again. And in this case. The sun represents your inner essence that is of love and light. So I'm going to start the sound healing now. And right, if you're experiencing a negative emotion at this moment, I would like you to close your eyes and as you listen to the sound, to bring all your attention to the body parts where you experience the emotion most strongly. Okay, example, the heart, the stomach, the back, etc. Okay, so we're going to do it now. A deep breath. Okay, and that's it for today. So thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!